When Satan tries to mock us and discourage us, what we must do is allow that to remind us of who we really are and who he really is. Because what God is raising up in the earth, and this is one of the reasons he hasn't done this any more quickly than what he, than what he has. Because he's using this season to shape a people. But we need to we need to remind ourselves and we need to remind the enemy. We we started out as a motley crew, but we are no longer a motley crew. And not only are we not a motley crew, we are not what we are going to be. Because what by the time he's finished with us, we will be a group of people that the gates, the plans, the governments, the schemes of hell cannot prevail against. We will do the works of Jesus in greater works. We will see the billion soul harvest. We will see entire nations transformed. So David goes, you know, he goes to the, to the prophet. He says, go to Judah. You need, you need to get back to your roots, son. But do you know what else that priest did for David? David had taken a memento there a short while before this and said, I need for you to hang on to this for me. I may need it again. I may need it one of these days. Any, any anybody know what it was? It was the sword of Goliath. Because after David put the rock through the forehead, he grabbed Goliath's sword and cut off his head with his own sword. And he took that sword as a trophy, and he said, "I guess." I might need this one of these days. Probably a little big to carry it around on his side like a normal sword. I mean, probably drag the ground. But I just can't get past the prophetic picture, the symbolism here in this passage. That when Saul is mocking him and saying, you will not rule this nation, I will take you out. That God sends this young boy and his motley crew back and says, go get the sword. I want to remind you. Because now it's not just the God who delivered you from the bear and the lion. It's the God that delivered you also from the giant. Go get the sword. See, I, I, I back to this thing, when the enemy tries to discourage us and lie to us, and through the circumstances and all the crazy things we see happening, it says, this is, this, these, thing, these things you talk about that God's going to do, they're, they're not going to happen. We need to allow that to remind us, just send us back to past victories. And say, this is not about me. This is about the God who... who a few months ago delivered me from this giant because he was trying to take my land. Every time I put my feet in Washington, D.C., I say, this is my land. This is my city. This is my nation. Why do I do that? Because it's the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's. Every square inch of America belongs to him. He has delegated it to us. I'm not talking about physical ownership where we're going to take over and anybody that doesn't know the Lord shouldn't be allowed to own land. I'm talking about ruling spiritually. I'm talking about the purposes of God and the kingdom being established in the earth. It belongs to the Lord.
the sword of Goliath. There's one more thing, though, in this passage that I see as a mocking spirit. Saul becomes enraged that this prophet has helped David. And he goes to the, 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 the priest's home. He's actually a priest. And he confronts the priest, and he's so enraged, he tells his soldiers, kill this priest and the whole, his whole family and the whole entourage. You're all the priests here, and the, kill them all. He's so demonized by now. And these Israelite soldiers following Saul, are they have enough fear of the Lord in them to say, I'm sorry, king, but I'm not doing that. But a foreigner who had no fear of God and was an evil man said to Saul, I'll take care of it. And he did. The language is that Saul said to him, attack. Some translations say, fall on. Some say, cut down these priests. It, it is it's very interesting to me that it is the Hebrew word paga. If you've read my book, Intercessory Prayer, you know that paga is the Hebrew word for intercession. But it's a picture word. <clears throat> so sometimes intercession is a spiritual warfare, and so the word means to fall upon an enemy. The context can be good or bad. It could do doing it in a righteous way, or the word can be used for doing it in an unrighteous way, which, in which case it wouldn't be prayer. It would just be battle. But this word has all these pictures associated with it. So here's a word that also means intercession. What we are trying to do to turn this nation around and see this land come back to him and see the reigning of the Lord Jesus Christ in this nation and all the mocking spirits and all of the, the uh, taunting of the enemy saying, you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. And he comes into the house of God and uses one of our words that means prayer and destroys priests. Now, if you don't think that's a prophetic picture, then you don't understand prophetic. This, if you apply it prophetically to where we are today, this is Satan saying, you think your prayers are going to turn this thing around? I'll show you what I'm going to do. You think you're going to win this war? I'll show you who's going to win this war. I think it's very important for us. This is why I started in 1 Chronicles 12. It is very important for us to read ahead. It's very important for us to look at the motley crew and read ahead to what they became. The greatest fighting unit the world has ever known. It's really important for us to read ahead and say, even though he was staying in Adullam, leading this motley crew, being mocked by his enemies, he made it to the throne. 